I'm Matt Smith, right now on Upfront. Trump endorses the shakeup in the Republican primary race for governor. Tim Michaels is here. Trump loves winners. He sees that we're winning this thing and that we're going to win this. Plus, record high gas prices, inflation, and a new jobs report. The White House economic advisor standing by as all eyes turn to the midterms. Then, demands for gun reform. The House preparing to vote this week. Congressman Scott Fitzgerald on his no vote in committee. And a culture war in Kiel. The bomb threats, the school investigation. What's next for a rattled community in the national spotlight? Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Matt Smith. Two months to go in a major shakeup this weekend. Tim Michaels receiving the endorsement of former President Donald Trump in the Republican primary for governor. Michaels rising above former Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish, Kevin Nicholson, and Representative Tim Ramthan in receiving that endorsement. We talked with Michaels just hours after receiving the endorsement Friday at his West Dallas campaign office. And my phone rang, and uh, lo and behold, it was President Trump. Was kind of hoping we'd get the call. I mean, all the candidates have been coveting this endorsement. So uh, we were pretty excited when the phone rang. Had a nice conversation with him for three or four minutes. Uh, he talked about the race. He said, I knew from the first time I met you that you were the guy that could win this thing and beat Tony Evers. Trump loves winners. He sees that we're winning this thing and that we're going to win this thing. So had a great little conversation, and uh, it, it, it was fun. But it doesn't change anything we're doing on the campaign. We're working hard every day. We're marching forward, and we're getting an astounding response out on the campaign trail. Does this solidify it and make it a two-way race between you and Rebecca Clayton? You know, I'm not, I, I like Rebecca. Uh, I, like, I like Kevin, and I like Tim Rantham as well. I think they're all, they're all fine people. Uh, I'm not going to worry about what they're doing. Uh, I'm just going to focus on, on what we're doing here. Is the former president going to come campaign for you here in Wisconsin? He didn't say anything about that. He didn't say whether he, whether he was going to come to Wisconsin or not. Uh, I didn't ask him. I didn't think it was my place to ask, you know, are you coming or not. Uh, he'll make up his own mind. Would that help you if he came? Uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly welcome if President Trump wants to come in and show even further support for me. Uh, you know, any, pr any former president of the United States that wants to come help your campaign, uh, I think you embrace that. The president has talked a lot about the 2020 election and the results and, and the reviews ongoing in yeah. states like Wisconsin. Yeah. You recently changed your position on the State Elections Commission, now say that you want it dissolved. Yeah. Did you do that in anticipation or in an attempt to get this endorsement? No, it, it had nothing to do with that. So I, I'm a businessman and I, I look at things and things are ever evolving. I'm, I'm always analyzing, I'm always looking at how can we make things better. If we have a division at Michaels that is having problems or failing, we're going to look at that and figure out what is the best way to remedy it. I took a hard look at WEC, I did my homework, and I realized that it was unsalvageable. We will come up with something better and improved. We have to have open and fair uh, elections in Wisconsin, and we will do that. Do you believe the 2020 election was stolen? You know, a lot of people have questions about the 2020 election, and, and so do I. And uh, it, we've got to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Whether you're a Republican or an Independent or a Democrat, Every American has to embrace that our elections are fair, open, and honest. It's one of the very first things I'll do when I'm governor. Work with the legislature, make sure that these loopholes that are out there are closed. Everyone has to have confidence in the election system. When I joined the military, I took an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. Our whole constitutional system will come crumbling down if we don't have fair, open, and honest elections. There have been other Republican leaders who have said, yes, there may have been issues with how the election was administered, but it was not stolen. There was not widespread fraud. Can you well, stay the same? Well, what I think what everybody is confident of is that there was problems with the election. Uh, we're not, nobody's sure what the extent of it was. All we can do is make sure that it doesn't happen again. Does the Secretary of State run elections in Wisconsin under your plan? No, the Secretary of State does not. We need to have a fair representation of all the people of Wisconsin, and we're going to come out with a great plan that shows how we're going to do that. And the gun debate has yeah. been renewed after recent mass shootings uh, across the country, shootings in, in Milwaukee. Would you sign any legislation as governor that expanded background checks in the state? Yeah, gu guns are uh, a big issue in every election cycle, and uh, you know my, my heart and prayer goes out to all the victims of, of the recent shootings. Uh, some, something has to change, but I believe it's a societal problem. Uh, you know, we have to have uh, people that are afraid of law enforcement. I think that the big surge 
in crime in the last two years is a byproduct of the whole defund the police movement. And, and bad guys, if you will, are just thinking, I can get away with this stuff now. When I'm governor, I am going to crack down on crime. I'm going to let everybody in law enforcement know that it's okay to do your job. It's okay to enforce the law. Do you support any expansion of background checks in the state? You know, as a businessman, what we do is we look at all the issues that are on the table. And I won't be sworn into governor till next January. At that time, I will bring in all the proper people. We'll sit down and we'll look at all the proper issues. But I know that a gun has never jumped up by itself and shot somebody. It's the people that are behind those weapons. As early as uh, in a couple of weeks, abortion could be handed back to states for control in Wisconsin to be the 1849 law. Mm -hmm. Would you sign any legislation? Some Republicans, Speaker Voss has said he would support adding exceptions for rape and incest. Would you sign that into law? So I'm pro-life. Uh, it comes from my faith. Uh, and I believe that we have to protect the unborn. And there, there's two victims in, in my book. There's two victims when you have an abortion. There's, there's the unborn baby. Uh, and then there's the mother, the recent mother, that's going to have to carry that emotional baggage the rest of her life. And, and science has, has, has proven that that's the case. Uh, the 1849 law is an exact uh, mirror of my position, and my position is an exact mirror of the 1849 law as well, which uh, has an exception for uh, life of the mother. But you wouldn't support exceptions for rape or incest? Uh, that's correct. J.R. Ross is editor of wispolitics.com, our editorial partner. All right, JR, put this into context for us. How big of a deal is this endorsement? Well, it, it doesn't seal the deal for Michael in terms of winning the GOP nomination, but it creates another avenue for him to go take it away from Rebecca Clayfish. So I'm trying to say is that just the endorsement by itself is not enough for Michaels to win. What he has to do is use it wisely. Case in point, Michaels had an ad up already on immigration. He recut that ad quickly after the endorsement to add in the Trump backing. That's smart by Michael. It shows, it talks it up. He has to go tell people now, hey, Trump is behind me. I've got his support. The Clayfish campaign clearly knew this endorsement was coming. I think I calculated about seven minutes after the endorsement, they came out with, with their statement. What do you make of her response and what does this do to her campaign? Well, look, she's still one of the front runners and that hasn't changed for a while. Going into state convention, we had two front runners. Michael's because of his money, Clayfish because her connection to the base. Coming out of convention a few weeks ago, we still had two front runners. Clayfish because her connection to the base, Michael's because of his pocketbook. Now Michael's has this added thing of the Trump endorsement to go with his money. Clayfish, though, still has a base of support. Even though Michael's has been running ads, uh, one of my sources has it about a three to one advantage for Michael's since he got into the race over a Clayfish. Even though he's running those ads, Clayfish has still got pulling from what I'm hearing that shows her can maintaining and even like building on her level of support with the GOP base. Now, the question is, what point will Michaels either do what we call contrast ads or go negative? Uh, to one person's negative and one person's contrast, that's besides the point. At some point, Michaels has to take this away from him. How does he do that? All right, it'll keep us talking for the next couple of weeks at least. J.R. Ross, editor of wispolitics.com. J.R., thank you. Anytime. Up next, record gas prices, inflation, and a new jobs report. The White House economic advisor standing by in Washington. Plus, the gun debate just days now from a vote in the House.